Hi, welcome. And in this video, I'm going to be going over a reading strategy in which you're going to find claims in the textbook. And this is a strategy you're going to use throughout AP World History to help you make sense of a textbook that may be written with a high vocabulary and a sentence structure you're not familiar with from most of your other textbooks, since this is, for the most part, your first AP class. And so this is a strategy that's going to help you make sense of the reading. Now, it's going to take you a little longer at first to get used to this, but with, with the practice, you're going to end up becoming a much better reader and a much better writer because you're going to learn how to write thesis statements and claims. So to get started, you're going to want to have a piece of paper set up to take notes in what is called a claims and thesis organizer. And this is in your handbook. You can pause the video right now and take out a piece of paper and make this graphic organizer or you can open up a copy from your handbook and make a copy for yourself and type that up if you'd like. So if you want to pause the video right now, you can do so and continue when you're ready. So what you're going to do is you're going to write claims in the first column of this graphic organizer. And there's a bigger section for the introduction because the introduction is going to have a lot more claims. The sections are going to be smaller than the introduction, so they don't need as much space. So you're going to be using the left column. And in the left column, you're going to take notes. Do not write complete sentences. You're going to try to paraphrase the claims that I'm going to go over and write down bullet points. Normally, for your average chapter, you will have in the introduction anywhere between 9 to 15 claims that the author makes. And for a section introduction, it's usually between 3 to 4 claims uh, per section. And then you're also going to later take those claims and develop them into a thesis. So the second column is going to be for a thesis, but you don't need to worry about that right now. Today, the focus is going to be on how to find the claims. So every chapter begins with a story. So usually the chapter has a, a big photo for one page, and then the reading begins. And that first page, and almost all of those uh, paragraphs on that first page is a story, and that's a hook. If you think of an essay, this is like the attention getter, the hook. Uh, and it's there to kind of contextualize it and to kind of put you into the time period and give you a story of something that was happening, and then it'll connect the chapter. For the sake of note taking, that section is not important. It's more of, you know, getting your interest. Toward the bottom of the page, or sometimes at the very top of the next page, the author is going to transition from a story about a particular person or event. In this case, it's going to be a, a man named Sean Sang. And it's going to transition into making claims um, about history, things that happen. So anything the author states happens or the reason for the developments, those are the claims you're looking for. So you should have already read the introduction for homework. Um, and if not, you can pause here and you can read the story of Shuan Sang so you can see how the first few paragraphs are really not making claims about history, but they're about a person. And then you'll notice either at, in this case, it's going to be at the top of the next page, it's going to move over and away from him and now start talking about China in general. And that's where you're going to begin looking for the claims. So if we were to go to the second page of chapter 15, we would start to find claims. And so if I'm looking at this paragraph, right, it says Xuan Sang undertook his journey at a precocious time, which means it was a good time to do this for him. It was, you know, likely to produce success for him. Uh, and that's a little quick note on vocabulary. When you come across words you don't understand, you look them up if they're interfering with the meaning. Uh, you can go to Google. You could just type in the word and usually right away it will give you the definition and the little audio button to hear how to pronounce it. Now. It says, for more than 350 years after the fall of the Han Dynasty, war, invasion, conquest, and foreign rule disrupted Chinese society. So that's my, what I'm underlining because the author's claiming that these conquests and foreign rule disrupted China. And then he goes on to say that toward the end of the 6th century, however, centralized imperial rule returned to China. And so what you want to focus on when you're, when you're looking for claims and you're underlining them, like if you're going to be using the PDF version, then you could just highlight or you can annotate on an app. Focus on the verbs, right? What happened? Imperial rule returned, right? They're returned. So what returned? Centralized imperial rule to China. 
the Sui and Tang dynasties restored order and presided over an era of rapid economic growth. So there was economic growth. Agricultural yields rose dramatically, right? Rose dramatically, that's what he's saying. There's a claim. Technological innovations boosted production of manufactured goods. And then it says China ranked with the Byzantine and Abbasid empires as a political and economic anchor of the post-classical world. So it was an important political and economic empire compared to these other two. And so what you're going to do is when you've identified them on your notes, you would write them down paraphrased. So if I were writing these notes, and you could use my example to complete the introduction part of your notes, because later on you're going to be tasked with doing sections one, two, and three in the same format. So you're going to write down the claims in your words. China faced instability after the Han Dynasty. Then he said that the Sui and Tang Dynasties restored centralized rule to China. Then he said China's economy grew rapidly as a result of more agriculture and manufactured goods made with technological innovations. And then he said that China was one of the major civilizations of the post-classical era. So notice I deleted some detail. I, I deleted the names of other empires. You don't have to write it all. You're getting the, the main claims that he is making. And if there's something in the claims that you don't understand, now is your time to look it up. Because these are going to be the topics you're going to see throughout the chapter. So it's better to look them up and figure out what does it mean to have centralized rule. And in the summer reading, I talked about the difference between centralized and decentralized. And so in this case, all the power is concentrated in the hands of one emperor and his particular court, his government. Then I go on to the next paragraph. And here the authors came claiming that for China, the post-classical era was an intense age of interaction with other people. Chinese merchants participated in trade networks that linked most regions of the Eastern Hemisphere. Buddhism spread beyond its homeland of India. It attracted a large number of following in China. It influenced the thought of Confucian scholars. A resurgent China made its influence felt throughout East Asia. Diplomats and armed forces introduced Chinese ways into the Korean, Korean Vietnam. And rulers of Japanese islands looked to China for guidance in matters of political organization. Korea, Vietnam, and Japan retained their distinctiveness, but all three lands drew deep inspiration from China and participated, right? So do you see how I'm highlighting, right, those, those action words? That's what you're looking for. The, the author is saying that all of these things happened. And if it's in this introduction, that means that later on in the chapter, he's going to back all this up with examples and evidence. So as you read the rest of the chapter, you're basically looking to all the stuff that the author writes to prove these points. And that's where you're gonna focus on trying to understand what's important. If it's in these claims at the introduction, it's important and that's the stuff you wanna remember. So I'm gonna write down the claims for my second um, paragraph and I'm still in the introduction section of my note guide. So there was an intense interaction around China. Merchants linked the Eastern hemisphere. Buddhism spread and became popular in China, even influencing Confucianism. China influenced uh, Korea, Vietnam, and Japan through diplomacy and military. Korea, Vietnam, and Japan were inspired by China, but maintained their uniqueness. So now, what I have are a list of bulleted claims in my note-taking guide. And so you can see here, I have about nine claims. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply spice. And one of the materials you're going to want to use in this class is a highlighter. Now, if you're going to be annotating, you could just change colors on, on the highlight tool that you're going to use if you're using the PDF. So I'm just going to give each spice theme a color. And spice, if you didn't see it last year in geography, uh, there is a guide in the handbook that explains spice. But essentially, the AP World History class is going to help, is going to focus on five different elements of civilization. So every chapter you read, you're going to want to learn what was the social structure like in this part of the world at this time and why. 
What kind of government or political organization did it have? How did they interact with the environment? What types of technologies and in interaction and living off the land was used? What kind of cultural developments emerged? What did they believe? What kind of culture developed, writing, religion, philosophy, etc.? And what kind of economic activity? How did people here make a living? What did they make? Did they engage in trade? How did this change society? And those are your spice themes. So what I'm going to do is I'm applying spice, or I could say I'm going to spice it up. And so what I'm doing here is I'm finding the points and I'm highlighting, okay, uh, facing instability, restoring centralized rule, influencing Korea, Vietnam, and Japan through diplomacy and military are all political themes. Economic growth, manufactured goods, merchants, trade, that's economics. So I'm going to highlight those in green. Interacting with the environment, um, agriculture, farming is interacting with the environment, technological innovation, because uh, you're using tools to do something that normally you would do by hand. Uh, intense interaction, because you're using the geography to interact with the people around you, I'm going to highlight in brown. Um, culture, talked about Buddhism, the spread became popular, they inspired China. These regions maintain their uniqueness. I want to highlight those in red. And notice that in this in this introduction, there wasn't really anything that the author said about social structure, which it, it is going to talk about it, but it's obviously not highlighting their social structure as a major component of what to focus on in this chapter. So sometimes you'll see one spice theme missing, um, but it's usually not social, but in this chapter it is. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to then turn all of this into a sentence. So I want to try to combine the stuff that's in purple into like a phrase, the stuff that's in green into a phrase, whatever's in red into a phrase. So the reason these are called synthesis notes, when you synthesize and you're, what you're doing is you're doing a higher order thinking here. You, did, you started off very simple. You identified, you pointed to the book and said, here's what the author says. That's easy. Anybody can do it. But then what you did was you began to then decide what is important to underline. So now you're using a little bit more of a, of a higher skill. It's still not very hard. And you had to understand what it says. So one rule of thumb you're going to follow when you take notes is don't ever, ever write down anything if you don't know what it means. Find out what it means first. That doesn't mean, oh, I don't know what it means. I'm not going to write it. No, that means it seems important, but I don't know what it says. So I better look this up. And then you're going to look it up, then you're going to write it down. Now you're showing knowledge. That's a higher order skill. Then what I'm doing is I'm analyzing. I'm breaking apart the section. I'm breaking it apart into little bullet points. So when you analyze something, you break it up into small pieces so you can look at it more carefully. And now that I have it here in my bullet points, I'm looking at it more carefully. I'm practicing a higher thinking skill, a more critical analysis skill of application. I'm taking a theme called SPICE. A so you know a concept like social structure or political structure or culture or an economic structure, and I'm applying it to my put to my notes. I'm saying this is economic, this is political. So I'm applying something, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back together, and that's what a synthesis is. And synthesizing is a high level skill. This is the kind of stuff that's going to make you quote unquote smarter. This is the type of skill you're going to need to succeed in a college level class. Okay, the skill of synthesis, the skill of analysis, of evaluation. So we're practicing synthesizing. We took apart two paragraphs and we're going to put it back together in two sentences. So if you look at my next slide is my example. Now I have to I have to decide, right? I, I, I need to evaluate information, a higher order skill. I need to evaluate what is not needed, and what I have to leave in so that I could still make the most important claims the author is making. So my sentence will look, or actually I have two sentences. Usually when there's two paragraphs, a two-sentence thesis is perfectly fine. And this is going to go in the second column. So on my notes, the left column has my bulleted points. Now my right column is going to write my two sentences. Following the instability after the fall of the Han, the Sui and Tang dynasties restored centralized rule to China, Buddhism began to influence Chinese culture, and China began to thrive economically as a result of improvements in agriculture and manufacturing. 
As Chinese merchants began to trade and interact with the world around them, China spread their cultural and political influence to Vietnam, Korea, and Japan, who were still able to maintain their uniqueness. And that is what I call a chapter thesis. So it's going to be longer than a section thesis because you're working with 9 to 14 or 15 claims. And everything you read in the chapter is to support this. So months from now, this is the information here you need to remember. So when we go back to study for unit exams and when we study for the AP exam, instead of having to reread the book, you're going to read your claims and thesis page first. And you'll be like, oh, okay, yes, I remember how they spread Oh, this is when Buddhism spread, and this is what happened. Oh, I remember the economy grew because of agriculture. That's when they had fast ripening rice, which is something you're going to read about in this chapter. So that is the skill of synthesis. And you can watch this video as many times as you want throughout the year because this is a skill that you're going to repeat. And I guarantee you that if you learn and master the skill, it's going to become very easy where it's going to start to happen in your head automatically. And that's where you want to be. That's where you're going to be at the college level when it comes to reading. So you're going to repeat this process for each section introduction. So the sections are only going to focus on one or two spice themes. So when you go to the section, it's going to break up what the introduction said into smaller chunks. So a section introduction isn't going to have social, political, cultural. It might just have political and economic, and then that's it. So you want to look out for that. So your homework is going to be to write the claims for sections one, two, and three for chapter 15. If you feel confident and you want to try to write the thesis for each section using the same format, go for it. If not, this is what, we, what we're going to talk about in the video. So thank you, and I hope this is useful. Please practice this skill. This is a skill that you're going to use probably for the rest of your life if you're going to be reading a lot of academic texts. Okay. I'll see you in class.